first question you want to we might want to ask ourselves is what is electrochemistry? That's probably a good way to start off a new unit on electrochemistry. All right, so essentially what electrochemistry is, is the study of redox reactions and their applications. Okay, so in general chemistry one, we introduce the concept of a redox reaction. What is a redox reaction? Oxidation reduction reaction, that's the full name. Losing what? Losing and gaining electrons. Losing and gaining electrons, yes. So redox reaction is short for an oxidation reduction reaction where we are having the transfer of electrons. So something is being oxidized, something's losing electrons. Something's being reduced, gaining electrons. Okay. So redox reaction, oxidation, reduction reaction. Involves the transfer of electrons. All right, so the two sides of the coin are the oxidation half reaction and then the reduction, right? What is an oxidation half reaction? What's happening if something's being oxidized? It's losing electrons. And what uh, is going on with something that's being reduced or involved in that reduction half reaction? It's gaining electrons. <coughs> and if you ever forget, who do you ask to help you learn? Leo, good old Leo the lion, right? Leo the lion. Everyone who didn't have to put up with me in Gen one is like, what is he talking about? <laughs> they start looking at me. So Leo is a lion. And when you ask Leo, like who's being oxidized or who's being reduced? Saying, you know, Leo, Leo, you know, which one's oxidation? Which one's reduction? He says, grr, because he's a lion. And that's what lions say, OK? It's not got crazy. Draw it. All right, <laughs> guest, guest artist. I should take notes. Okay, circle. <laughs> sorry, sorry. All right. No pressure or anything. It doesn't have to be great. It's, it will be great. <laughs> Yeah, that's Tony the Tiger. But I mean, it could be Lion, like Leo the Lion. Leo thinks you're great at chemistry. You could be like our whole mascot. All right, it's definitely like leagues above mine. So that's our guest artist. Thank you. That's good. All right, and then of course, all you needed to add in is the. Grr. Do you, need, do you want to sign it? No. Okay. All right, so when you say ask Leo, which one's being oxidized, which one's reduced? Um, oh, man. That's where I screwed up. Let's get rid of this. Got it right. So Leo stands for losing electrons is oxidation. So L E. Oh, that's how uh, you remember. And then when you ask him which one's which, he says grr. But you have to remember that he spells grr incorrectly. Okay, he spells it G-E-R, and it's G-G-R is G-R-R-R-R. -R -R -R. 
depending on how, many, how hungry he is, that determines the number of R's. But he spells it G-E-R. He's a lion. Come on. I'm impressed that you get that far. So GER is gaining electrons is reduction. All right, so that's what a redox reaction is. And we're going to you know, talk about you know, why they happen, how they happen, and also how they're used. Turns out they're pretty important. Um, and so one of the things we're going to have to do is be able to identify what uh, is being oxidized in a reaction and what's being reduced in a reaction. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to assign oxidation states, which again we did in general chemistry one, but we'll go through a quick review. Um, Calcium is losing uh, electrons to water in this case, and we can see that by seeing that calcium starting out zero, neutral atom, and now it's a plus two um, ion. So that's pretty easy, going from a neutral atom to a plus two ion, you can see that it was lost some electrons. It was oxidized. Uh, the trickier part comes in like molecules or polyatomic ions, water, you know, hydrogen is not an ion in water, so we have to assign that oxidization of plus one, then when it's a neutral molecule, its elemental form, it's zero, so it goes from plus one to zero, so that's how we figured out it gained an electron. So that's half the fun of balancing redox reactions, which what we're gonna do next is assigning the oxidation state. So we have to remember the rules on assigning oxidation states. Now the full list of rules for assigning oxidation states is in your textbook, chapter four, if you want the full rundown. I shorten that list, reduce it a little bit, and my rules get you the answer like 98% of the time. Okay, that's pretty good, 98%, I'll take it. All right, so there are exceptions that sort of beat my rules, but you know, this is general chemistry that usually is going to happen. <coughs> so the first thing you'll assign is any free elements. Their oxidation state equals zero. So that's why calcium is a zero up here, and why hydrogen is a zero. Two, hydrogen in compounds is its usual charge. What's hydrogen's usual, usual charge? Plus one. Except, here's where my 2% falls, metal hydrides. Which we won't encounter, we won't worry about them, but when, met, when hydrogen bonds with a metal, it does take on a minus one formal charge. Okay, it actually gains electrons. It kind of acts like a halogen, gaining electron, metal hydrides. So like nickel hydride, that's a common one. All right, so hydrogen in compounds is a plus one. That's why it's a plus one in water. It's a plus one in hydroxide as well. All of the hydrogen in your body is plus one oxidation state. Three. Oxygen in compounds, the oxidation state is its usual charge. What's its usual charge? The oxide ion. Two negative, good, so minus two. I already used an asterisk, so I gotta come up with another symbol. except peroxides. Peroxides, like hydrogen peroxide you put on your boo-boo? That's, that's actually, well, metal peroxides are the O2 minus two polyatomic ion, so that has a minus one formal charge. And then our one last rule, which takes care of a lot of other elements because of course, okay, free elements, hydrogen, oxygen, uh, there's a few more elements. Even if you have a periodic table from 2007, there's still a lot more elements than hydrogen and oxygen. How are we going to figure out the rest of them? Well, it turns out that the sum of the oxidation states 
has to equal the overall charge of the molecule or polyatomic ion or even element. Sometimes I uh, think about losing the first rule, free elements equals zero, because it's also caught up in rule number four. Calcium is a neutral atom up in the reactant side. Its charge is zero. Its oxidation state is zero. It has to equal each other. Hydrogen, the diatomic uh, molecule on the uh, product side. It's a neutral molecule. Its charge is zero. So the sum of hydrogens has to be equal zero. So what plus, what plus the same thing equals zero? Zero. It has to be zero plus zero equals zero. But I still throw it in there. I don't know why. All right, so what we're going to use these for is, just like we did in general chemistry one, is we're going to use them to figure out what's been oxidized, what's been reduced, and then this semester we're going to take it a step further and balance the redox reactions. Doesn't that sound?